I want to look at factoring with the coefficient of a greater than 1, meaning there's a number bigger than 1 on the x squared term. To do that, first I want to talk about multiplying two binomials, because when we're factoring, the two binomials is our answer. And I like to use a guess and check type method to factoring these. So if I have, say, 2x minus 3 times 3x plus 1. Let's remember how to use the distributive property to multiply this together. The most common method people know is FOIL. FOIL only works for two binomials. So you multiply your first two terms together, the 2x and the 3x. That gives us our x squared term, the 6x squared. Then we multiply our outside and our inside. Okay, so I'm distributing the 2x to both terms and then I'm going to distribute the 3 to both terms. So for 2x times 1, that's positive 2x. And negative 3 times 3x, that's negative 9x. And then I multiply my constants, the negative 3 times 1, and I get negative 3. So we know that the last two, the first two terms gives us our x squared term. The last two terms give us our constant, and the outside and the inside are what give us that middle bx term, so 6x squared minus 7x minus 3. And we're going to use this idea for factoring, that we know that the first two terms will give us our x squared term, the last two terms will give us our our constant, and then the outside and inside give us that middle term, and that's what we're going to focus on. So if I have a polynomial, let's say uh, 6x squared plus, nope, sorry, I need that to be minus, I want it to erase, let's just make that a minus 33x plus 15. So I start by what numbers I can multiply to get 6, and then I'll look at what numbers I can get to get 15, multiply to get 15. So 6x is 6 times 1, or 3 times 2. And the 15 is our 15 times 1, or 3 times 5. I'm not going to worry about the negative signs yet. I'm not going to worry about any of that. The order, we'll, we'll play with that in a minute. So what I know is I can try either of these two to start to give me my x squared term. So I'm going to start by trying the 3x and the 2x. And then I'm going to try either the 15x or uh, 15 times 1, and then, or the 3 times 15, or 3 times 5. So let's try 3 times 5. I know that the first two is going to give me the 6x squared. I know that the last two are going to give me 15. That's why I chose them. So all I'm really checking now is my outside-inside terms to see if they can add to my 33x. So 3x uh, times 5x... The 3x times the 5x gives me 15x, and the 3 times the 2x gives me 6x. So is there any way I can combine 15x and 6x? No, so that doesn't work. So we'll try another way, 3x and 2x. Um, let's try 5 and 3 this way. So we switch the 5 and the 3. When I do my outside, I get 9x. In my inside, I get 10x. That's 19, not going to give me 33, so that's not going to work. <clears throat> Let's try another one. 3x and 1 and 2x and 15. So we'll try the 15 times the 1. When I do my outside, I get 45x, and my inside, I get 2x. Those add to 
47 or subtract to 43, not the 33 that I want. So again, that does not work. So we're going to try another one. Let's switch our 15 and our 3. So we get, I want to move this up. Let's erase these that didn't work for now, so I have some space. That's not going to go away. Let's throw this off to the side. So now we said we have 3x and 2x. We tried the 1 and the 15. We tried the 1 here and the 15 here. Let's try the 15 here and the 1. And my outside is 3x. My inside is 30x. Can this give me a negative 33? Yes, if they're both negative. And if they're both negative, I get a positive 15 when I multiply these together. And then I get negative 3x and negative 30x gives me the negative 33. So I found my correct factorization, 3x minus 15 times 2x minus 1. Now this may seem like a lot of work, all this trial and error, but the more you practice, the better you get at it. I could have told you right off the bat that 15 and 1 was going to work because I can look at it and do some of that multiplication in my head. So it just takes practice, and the better you get at it, the better you are at using the right numbers first and guessing correctly on the first try. So it just takes some time. Let's do another example. Let's factor negative uh, 8x squared plus 24x minus 18. <clears throat> now one thing we can do to make uh, the problem easier is divide everything by a common factor. So when I look at 8, 24, and 18, I see that they're all divisible by 2. So I'm going to factor out a negative 2. I don't like to factor with a negative on the x squared term. So I'm going to factor out a negative 2. And when I do that, I put a negative 2 in front. A negative 2 times 4x squared gives me the 8, negative 8x squared. Negative 2 times negative 12x gives me the 24x. And negative 2 times positive 9 gives me the 18. So now I'm just going to work on factoring 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. And again, I have my x squared term and my constant that I'm going to start with. My <coughs> The ways I can get 4 are 4 times 1 or 2 times 2. The way that I can get 9 is 9 times 1 and 3 times 3. Now when I see this, that I have perfect squares here and a perfect square here, I want to start with that possibility. Okay, So I'm going to start with 2x. So I'm looking at 2x and 3. 2x and 3. That's what I've decided to try. My outside is 6x. My inside is also 6x. Can that equal the negative 12x? Yes, if this is negative and this is negative, I get negative 12x. And then I get a positive 9 because negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So in ended up getting the right answer. So I don't deal with the negative signs till the end, and I just make sure that I can get the right sign in the middle and the right sign on the end. So my final answer is negative 2, 2x minus 3, 2x minus 3, or we can write it as uh, negative 2 times 2x minus 3 squared. Okay. We're looking at one last example. In this case, it's going to actually ask us to solve the equation. And it may or may not say by factoring. So we want to be able to look at the problem and see if it's factorable. So I'm going to use one that has a coefficient again because the ones that don't have coefficients are a lot easier. 
and you guys, my class, should be good at that already. So we're going to look at 3x squared plus 8x minus 3 equals 0. Now the only difference in this problem is that the last step I'm going to set each parentheses equal to 0 and then solve it. So I know that my x squared term, the only way to get 3 is 3 times 1. And for my constant term, the only way to get 3 again is 3 times 1. So I don't have many choices in how I'm going to multiply this. So I'm going to start with 3x and x. <clears throat> and then I'm going to put 3 and 1. Let's try it the other way. 3 and 1. And when I do that, my outside is 3x and my inside is 3x. Can that give me 8? No, 3 and 3 can only give me 0 if 1's positive and 1's negative, or a 6, negative 6. So that one doesn't work. Since that didn't work, I'm going to try the switching my variables. I'm going to use 3x, not my variables, my constants, and x. And I'm going to put the 3 here, put the 1 there. So my outside is 9x. My inside is 1x. Can this be a positive 8 if it's a negative 1? <coughs> so that means the negative goes here and the positive goes in front of the 3. And that gives me the negative 3 when I multiply negative 1 and positive 3, and then it gives me negative 9x, or positive 9x minus 1x, which is a positive 8x. So that is my answer there, 3x minus 1 and x plus 3. Now my equation started with equal to 0, so that means I have to go the extra step and set each parentheses equal to 0. The zero product property says if a times b is equal to 0, then either a has to equal 0 or b has to equal 0. So we can set 3x minus 1 equal to 0. I can add 1. I get 3x equals 1 divided by 3 and x is 1 third, and x plus 3 equal to 0, minus 3, x is equal to negative 3. These are my solutions. They're also my zeros, and if I were to graph this, it's where the graph crosses the x-axis, so they're also x-intercepts. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Hope this helps you get through tonight's homework.